You can lower your Volkswagen for free and we're gonna show you how. Dude! Are you tired of waiting on subscribers? Does it seem like no one is clicking on the bell? Well, try subscribe now. You'll be amazed by how quickly it works. Just a couple of sprays and subscribers will come rolling in. Spray a little in the air, spray a little on your face, or even a little on your dog. Ah! You won't believe how many subs you can get with subscribe now. Not sold in stores online or anywhere else. All right, so the easy thing to do would be to buy yourself some welded. Get out of get out of <laughs> Fly. Buy yourself some welded adjusters, put them in, and it kind of gets you in the ballpark. Um, easy, you can kind of fine tune where you want your ride height to be. Most people aren't going up and down with it anyways. Once they set it low, they're staying there and. Yeah, and, and I, I like cheap. It free is awesome. <laughs> this is going to be 100% free right here. Yep. So here's a, a easy way to do this. Brian's going to lay this out, and I'm going to go grab some tools okay. and uh, get right. after, get after. Let's get on. <laughs> All right. I already drew this out, but I'm going to show you what we did here. Basically, we drew the profile of the, of the beam. So first thing I did was I just drew a, a square line, just something to reference to. Okay. This corner right at the bottom, we'll just call that the bottom tube got my compass out I drew the lower circle this this diameter when you draw this circle you want to make sure it's the exact diameter of the, the tube that you're uh, the beam tube here so we draw draw one tube I put the second one in here just to visualize things and make it a little easier you don't really have to draw both of them to get what we need but but it just it'll just help make everything look right it was five and seven eighths to the center of the second tube so we'll go off of that line we drew same circle okay got all that done next thing we need to know is the distance between the trailing arm and where the spindle comes out so take your square and you know you can put a mark on your trailing arm whatever you got to do you want that to be very accurate too you know, it, it's about six inches it's six inches so once we know that move that out of the way set our dividers up to six inches and we're going to draw that arc. So that's basically where the trailing arm arcs as it moves up and down. We got that. Now the last thing you want to have on here before you figure out your measurements is the angle of the, the lower trailing arm or both trailing arms. You want to measure the angle off the car with all the weight setting on there. And I measured ours and it was sitting about like 19 degrees. So I used the protractor here set it at 19 degrees draw that line so that basically this represents the trailing arm coming down that's the top one that's the lower one and that's your six inches across that's where the spindle sticking out right here so the secret to this whole thing here is this line right here we want to go two inches lower than it was so I'm gonna measure two inches parallel with the beam this line right here so We'll go right from that intersect where the where the trailing arm was go straight up two inches go ahead and mark both of them right there now we're going to draw a line straight from the center of the tube out to that mark that you just put on both of them like that. now this dimension on your tube is how much we need to twist it to get it to lower two inches. If we wanted one inch, we could have just came up one inch. If you wanted one and three sixteenths, you could do the same thing. You could mark that and it will be spot on when you do this this way. So we'll take our calipers, measure that up, exactly what we need here. And we're getting 320. So what we're gonna do next, is clean up the beam, scribe lines on our beam so we can cut this and twist it just in the right spot. We're going to get it cut up and show you how to do that.
Okay, we drew our two lines on. This is the critical dimension right here that we used the 320, got it marked up. I use a piece of angle to get our lines straight across both tubes here. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is mark where we're gonna cut. Yeah, this is uh, this is actually pretty easy. Um, what you want to do, there's a, what do they call that thing in the middle? Torsion center. The torsion center. Okay. <laughs> torsion center is in the center. But we know that that's only, what, about an inch wide inside of there? A little less. A little less. So we're going to cut, just going to go an inch on either side there to get our mark here. And it's, it's pretty simple. Just obviously put that number two. I, I can see it. There it is. And one inch here, one inch here. And then, this is the secret to getting a nice round cut or straight cut around your tubes. You take a, you can use that chipboard that we just had for our template and, and wrap it around, but you need a, a nice straight edge on there. It's gotta be straight. And all you do is you wrap it around, line up with your line, and make sure this stays lined up. See how it's not lined up there? That won't give you the straight line. You gotta keep it, get it straight. So just like that right there. And then take your marker and just whoop, go all the way around it. Perfect. And uh, do it all the way around and do it on both sides and then, then you're good. Yeah. And then you just gotta get to cutting. Cut. You definitely, uh, when you come cutting through this, we marked it all the way around. So we're gonna cut it from just like that. We're not gonna just plunge it right through. We're gonna start at the end, work our way around, spin it all the way around until we cut one off, then the other one off. And always use your grinder, you know, you want it to be able to kick away from you and never turn it around where it can kick at you because these things can get bind up in there and it's gonna get, get you hurt fast. So let's go ahead and start cutting. Nice work. Thank you. Got to stay nice and clean as always. I'm always doing the dirty work. I know. I like it. It makes it easy for me. <laughs> so before you cut this apart, you want to make sure that you uh, put a mark on it because you can actually flip this thing around and then it's going to mess your lines up and it's not going to go so well. We won't know where it will end up then. Right. So what you want to do, now you had your lines there. Now all you got to do is twist it down to that next line. That's where you're gonna to wanna to be. That's where you gonna put it. All you gotta do is clamp her on up. Yeah. Take that bit. Now, if you use a piece of angle iron, it'll, it'll hold this thing exactly where it needs to go. It's just a little bit tricky keeping the clamps on. Tell you, we're gonna make that clamp. That holds angles. <laughs> keep all three pieces lined up just right. Get, get the line up. Yep. Is that good? Yeah, I can hold that. Here, you, you line it up, I'll clamp it. We're good. Good. There mm -hmm. you go. All right, good deal. Dude, I'm hungry. Let's go get something to eat. The VW Life guys, they always go get, get, get food. We never get food. We need to go get food. Let's get food. Tacos. Tacos Texas great. style. Let's do it. The last thing you got to do is tack it in place before you start welding. You want to make, anytime you tack anything, not just this beam, you want to get a minimum of three tacks. And what that does is it holds it in place. Um, when you put that heat to it, it wants to move whatever part it is. So a minimum of three. On this thing, I'd probably do a tack, you know, maybe two or three on each side just to really hold it together. Definitely. You know, you can get in there with one, two, three, four. If you can get it, flip it over, get underneath, get all them. Yes. Uh, you can do this. We have a TIG. You can use a MIG welder. They, we kind of got away from those because they make a bit of more of a mess. You get a much cleaner well with a TIG, but it's no, no cleanup, no grinding. No grinding. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, that. I learned how to grind being a, <laughs> and I learned how to MIG weld. Nobody likes that. <laughs> we'll get into that later. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to weld this up and then, well, I thought we were done, but still got to do the bottom. One more. Yep. <laughs> get to welding. All right.
All right, got it all welded up. One down, one to go. You know what I was doing? <laughs> I was watching. Ooh, my eyes. <laughs> no, I wasn't. That's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, don't look at don't the weld. Don't watch the welder. <laughs> I was thinking when we were welding this up, we should give this away. Okay. Let's do if it. If you're down for it. Absolutely. I'm sure. Well, well, then what we need to do then, well, we need to finish it up. Yeah. How about this? Comment below if you want to win this beam. Of course, we're not going to ship it to you. You're going to have to meet us up somewhere one of the shows or or somewhere. Somebody's going to be at one of the shows at work. Or you can pay to ship it. I don't care. Other than that, we're going to do, let's, let's do another video on it too. Yeah. We'll, we'll narrow it up. Let's narrow it up and then uh, we'll pick a winner from one of the two videos. Mm -hmm. Just comment and we're just going to randomly pick one. And uh, <laughs> let's do that. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Perfect. All right.